Good afternoon. Preliminary finals weekend. Super exciting. A scare for a couple of Collingwood players this morning. Thank goodness they're okay. Bo McQuarrie and Josh Carmichael were driving from Chadston out to the airport to join the Pies on their charter flight up to Sydney. Had a car crash near the East Melbourne station on the South Eastern or City Link um, at about 8.30 this morning. Now, the clubs confirmed both are okay. In terms of the latest... I think Collingwood's uh, due to land in Sydney early this afternoon. Uh, McCreary is on that flight, I understand. Carmichael, who might have been the medical sub this weekend, as of early this afternoon, was still in Melbourne. Now, I don't know the reasons for that at this stage, and I don't know whether he'll rejoin the group and just take a commercial flight up to Sydney. We'll have more details on that this afternoon. There was pretty heavy damage to the three cars involved, in particular, you would have seen on some of the news footage a black Jeep. So it was a nasty accident. No one else uh, injured or in, well, no one else injured, which is the important thing. Both Pies players are okay. I think Caleb Poulter came to pick up Carmichael. That's one of the uh, players that's not getting a current game and took him off uh, home. So we'll have more details on that tonight and on our social channels, but a scare for a couple of Magpies, a significant one going out to the airport this morning. McCreary has been important for Collingwood this year, playing 21 games so there's no doubt that the, providing he's medically okay, which he is, I just want to now get him in the right frame of mind for having a big impact, hopefully for the Pies' sake, against Sydney tomorrow afternoon at the SCG. Preliminary final Friday. How exciting is this? Brisbane and Geelong, the triple MCG tonight. Geelong haven't made any changes. They've kept Collar Jasney. Now, Brisbane's interesting. They've brought in Danaher and McInerney. Um, Fort and Fullerton both omitted. I guess there'll be a bit of a question mark this afternoon whether Brisbane would make a late change. There's a 50% chance of rain scheduled for 8pm, according to Dr. Google. That's not necessarily reliable. Will they be too tall up for with um, McStay, Hipwood and Danaher? Brisbane obviously don't think so. And I think it's impossible to basically drop Danaher. I saw Nick Greewalt have a discussion about this on 360 last night. I mean, you know, you've got to put him in. He's basically an automatic dis- uh, selection in a way. But Brisbane will be relatively tall against the Cats tonight. But they were the main team changes. Collingwood went in unchanged so far, unless they obviously have to change their medical situation sub in light of Carmichael. Um, Geelong going in unchanged, as well as Sydney this weekend. Just one that slipped under the radar a bit involving Dustin Martin. It's my understanding the AFL is close to concluding its integrity investigation into Martin and the dancer or uh, professional person that he was pictured with at the pub in 2015 uh, dating back some seven years. I think Martin, as my understanding, will be cleared as a result of that AFL investigation. I don't think it's a massive surprise, but uh, I think there was a relationship between Martin and the dancer or professional woman involved. They knew each other, and there was nothing untoward in that respect, as my understanding. But I think the AFL will formally clear that in the next few days, and they've concluded behind the scenes that investigation. The Bombers coaching search continues. I'll get to the likely timing in regards to when they might appoint a senior coach shortly, but just in terms of some insight into what's going on out of the Bombers, I understand the applicants will do online psychometric testing, which is basically the psychological profiling as part of the process. So Heard, Uze, um, Laid, obviously, and Solomon would all be expected to do that. That's pretty common in executive recruitment, so there's nothing unusual there. I know the reviewer I mentioned yesterday, um, Andrew Thorburn, who's conducting the football review, has been contacting some prominent former staff and people outside the club just to help him as part of his review, which I think indicates that the review is particularly thorough. There was some commentary in regards to the board solidarity earlier this week. There are four vacancies, up to four vacancies on the board, which will be filled towards the end of the year. But it's my firm understanding from well-placed senior sources that the board's very stable and they'll fill those vacancies, they believe, with some people that obviously will support this push for change in regime. I mentioned Paul Guerra, the commerce boss, um, about a month ago or so, and I know Caro mentioned him as well this week as potentially being interested. So there is a bit of discussion in all that, but I think the board's very stable. Now, in terms of who's coming out to support Herdy, it is interesting, and you'll see over the next few days, it'll be interesting to see who comes out and supports the various candidates publicly. I'm on air actually with Joe Watson tomorrow, so I might ask him what his position is on our seven coverage if I get a chance. But Zach Merritt spoke at a Women in Insolvency and Restructuring Victoria footy finals luncheon at Crown Palladium last Friday. And according to an article has been quoted as saying that if Heard was to receive the job, they would make it work. But Merritt also made it clear that it was not the path 
he wanted to go down. Now, I'm always cautious with quotes from those lunches because often they're Chatham House rules and he's entitled to his own view. And if he's doing a cashy, often you've got to offer an opinion. So I don't want to have a go at Zach. But uh, if Zach's against James Hurd, that's a bit of a warning of the tail wagging the dog out there in terms of sort of players having a say on the coach. Having said that, I guess they're entitled to. So that was Zach's position apparently at a lunch. And I should caution that I haven't seen those direct quotes. They're quotes from a lunch that have been quoted. If you get a drift, I, I didn't see the quotes, but that was Zach Merritt's position last week. In terms of the timing of when we're likely to find out who the senior coach will be, as I mentioned yesterday, one of the key members of the panel, Dorothy Hisgrove, who's one of the six person panel who's influential on that panel is in fact overseas on business and also attending to a seeing a sick um, person at the moment according to the club and she wasn't Dorothy at in person at those important interviews on Wednesday so I imagine she'll have an important part of the process and we'll need to get back involved when she returns next week or the following week so I don't think we'll find out the Bombers coach until after the grand final just finishing off a big news week with some in brief news points trade period heating up clearly log or log will get to north melbourne i understand in the end that's his preference lob Fremantle digging in at this stage in regards to rory lob i reported months ago that lob wants to go to the bulldogs in the end that'll happen but uh Fremantle certainly digging at this stage my only points there would be the lob pick they received from the bulldogs i would have thought would be important for getting the luke jackson deal done particularly if uh, Fremantle finish high up on the ladder next year in terms of the way all those picks will fall. I think Fremantle had 13 and 14, and Melbourne would be cognizant of the value of one of their future firsts. So I would have thought Lobb's uh, trade pick there would be important for Fremantle in terms of getting Jackson and Tucker in the end. I think we'll get to North as well. That's his preference at this stage. Just in terms of some other news items, all the clubs will meet with the AFL following the Brownlow on Monday. A big news, a big topic there at that meeting will be Tasmania. And importantly and significantly, clubs will receive some information, including some financial information on that pitch. They'll also get access to some more information next week, which they can take back to their clubs. There might even be a vote now on Tasmania in the week following the grand final. And just behind the scenes, an interesting one bubbling away is obviously uh, Gil McLaughlin's replacement. I don't think they'll announce that until very close now to the end of the year. Gil's got a lot of things to do. Andrew Dillon in pole position to get that. But I do hear again this week that Brendan Gale, the Richmond boss, is quietly lobbying some of the clubs and certainly pushing his case behind the scenes. So it looks like a race between Andrew Dillon and Brendan Gale at the minute. But there's a couple of months there to play out, which is a very interesting situation, I guess, regarding the future of the game because Gill's on the uh, on the farewell lap. But he's got a lot of things to do, including the CBA, which is the collective bargaining agreement, which could be joint between the men's and the women's and also the club funding, and even a concussion fund, which they might announce over the next month or so. There's some real momentum behind that that Peter Gordon's putting together in the background. What a massive news week. One of the absolute gifts, if you like, of being a footies fan is being able to see both preliminary finals this weekend. It's a privilege, in my opinion. I just love watching preliminary finals weekend. I can't wait for it. Two massive, massive games. I think Geelong's obviously expected to win tonight, but Brisbane were good against Melbourne last week. And can the Pies continue this fairy tale, I guess, of the year? One of the stories of the year, the feel-good stories of the year, and knock off Sydney. Or we might see Buddy Franklin, if he retires, one more time in the grand final. There's just so many storylines. It's all so exciting. Triple M rocks football. Shut up.